Hi guys, I'm uh, just inside today doing some work and it's raining outside. It's been raining for a while and it looks like it's going to be raining for uh, quite a few more days. So I just came inside, uh, had some time to get some work done uh, here. Um, so i um, smoking some um, aromatic tobacco, uh, the espresso tobacco. Um, I already showed you guys this and talked about it before in a video before, so you can um, go look at that uh, if you're interested. Um, it's good with a cup of coffee, having some French roast. And um, smoking that in um, one of my Meerschaum pipes. Uh, but I didn't want to talk to you guys today about that. I wanted to talk today about um, pipe tamping and uh, its use, its importance, and why we should, you know, think about it at all um, as pipe smokers. Um, first, um, what is a pipe tamper? Um, there are many things, you know, that of course can be used as pipe tampers. Um, some people even use their finger. Uh, so you can use, you know, whatever's at hand, but I think it's important to remember that um, a pipe tamper is a, is a tool that, that as pipe smokers we use to get a certain job done in our, uh, in our pipe smoking. So, um, so the tool itself can be important, um, and it can affect, um, your smoke and, um, and how your smoke goes and it can affect, you know, all of those different things, uh, in various reasons. I and I can talk about those in a minute. Um, but, um, first let me show you just a few examples. I have some examples of uh, some pipe tampers. Of course, um, everyone's familiar um, with the check tool. Um, it comes with a spoon and a pick and the tamp part and it folds up like this. You can put it in your pocket uh, or in your pipe bag wherever. And so it's, you know, it has the three basic tools on it and it's a Czech tool made in the Czech Republic. Uh, so that's the basic tamper that you, you often see and can get at pipe shops or wherever. And they have, you know, everything else is a variation of that. There's the simple um, tamping nail. It has just the two parts, the tamp, and then the scoop or a scraper to scrape out the inside of the bowl uh, when you're done. Um, then I have this one. This one's nice. Um, a few, few of you may remember uh, this. This was given to me by uh, Nathan Campbell, uh, I think about five years ago. But he, he made these. He has a wood portion handle, and then he put a a bullet casing on the, the end and you can use the casing to tamp and it has a nice edge uh, for tamping there and then it has this little chain on it so you can put it uh, on a belt loop or on a keychain or um, you can clip it with you wherever you are. And then um, a few of you perhaps are familiar with the Peterson, they have a Peterson tamper and that's nice too. It's a similar to the check check tool. Um, it has a, a blade on one side and a pick on the other, like this. 
So you can scrape and dig with this and then you can aerate your tobacco if you need to or pick some out of the bottom or whatever with that and then um, the bottom has a, a nice uh, tamping foot. Um, and then it's not just Peterson but you know every virtually every pipe maker, pipe company, um, you know, makes some kind of version of a pipe tamper, but this is just the Peterson um, example. Um, but, you know, there are, there are other thing, other uh, ways of um, making a pipe tamper, and I like the real natural ones myself. Those, I use all of those too, but I also use ones like this that I got uh, years ago from someone that that makes them and sells them online. It's wood, a, a nice hardwood. Uh, it's, you know, has a scraping edge on this side and then a tamper. So you're limited with this. Um, you know, there's not all these different parts to it. Um, so often you, you have to take a check tool or something else with you, perhaps, um, if you feel the need to. But uh, these are nice and um, this is the one I probably use most. Uh, it's, it was made by the same guy and it's it's pretty well used now as you can see. Perhaps you can see, I don't know if you can see in this light. Um, but it, you know, it feels good in the hands and it's, it's smooth and it's a, a nice size. You know, you can get down into a bowl and still have something to hold on to. So it's a good size and uh, a good weight and you can, you know, slip it in a pocket or whatever. Um, and then many people just use, you know, whatever and, and, or make their own. And this is just one example of one that I've made over the years. I found this piece of a stick and just like the shape and look of it. And, um, you know, I sanded it down both ends. It's, you know, really soft and feels good in the hands and it's a good, good size. Um, but it's, you know, it's a stick. It's not it's not really anything special. Uh, but to me it is because I made it and uh, I use it and uh, it goes with me and I remember, you know, the day I got it and and the work that went into it. So, And there's lots of people out there that, uh, even in the pipe community, of course, that, you know, make tampers and you get, can get tampers from them, either buy them or um, Perhaps they'll even just send it to you. But so those are just kind of some examples of uh, pipe tampers and um, what they look like, and um, that there's you know there's different parts to them. You know, it's not it's usually not just a tamp. They're you know they usually like a check tool. They're multifaceted. You know, they they have different functions that they play uh, in our pipe smoking. Uh, different uses that we need them to uh, to do. Over the years, I've uh, I've observed different pipe smokers, of course, um, either you know on YouTube here or meeting them in person, talking with them um, at a meetup or or wherever it is. Um, and um, I've seen a lot of different techniques and a lot of. Uh, ways people uh, tamp their, their pipes and the procedures they use and what they use. And so it's, it's really varied, but there's, there's some, some things I think that are uh, really important for us to remember. Um, and there are wrong ways of, of pipe tamping and there are better ways. Um, let's put it that way, I think. Mm. One of the ironies, I think, of having a, a pipe smoking uh, channel and making videos while you're pipe smoking is often uh, it's a very unnatural thing to do, um, especially in certain circumstances. I was um, taking a walk through the city uh, quite a few weeks ago thinking about, um, thinking about this and pipe tamping and the correct ways and um, and I realized that when I was you know on a walk um, pipe smoking uh, is at a different level um, it's more challenging 
to uh, perhaps you know light and tamp and do things in a correct manner and um, especially when you're making a video um, this is where it gets really unnatural because you're as I am right now you're in a one-sided conversation and you're not really able to care for the pipe um, and tamp it and smoke it uh, in a correct way with relights and with tamping and all that so I think that's a real irony with you know what we have to deal with here on YouTube and making a pipe smoking video is often we're in a place uh, or doing something that makes it more difficult to um, to smoke properly and uh, of course the best way uh, to smoke a pipe is uh, besides making a video is what I'm doing here is relaxing sitting with my pipe uh, with my tamper, with my lighter, and um, and going through the procedure of pipe smoking and relaxing and doing it in a certain manner. Um, so I think we have to keep that in mind. That you know, here on YouTube, it's um, it's different than it than it really is in real you know in real life. When you sit down and you relax, you have a cup of coffee, and you're you're smoking in. Um, let's say a more uh, natural way, um, a way that's more conducive to um, a proper pipe smoke. Um, so you're not struggling and um, frustrated with your pipe because it's going out or you know whatever it is because my pipe is going out as I talk. Um, but we know that when we are sitting even with friends and relaxing with a pipe that we don't have to talk the whole time in a conversation. We uh, we can talk and then we can you know come back to our pipe, and that's a little bit more of a natural way uh, of pipe smoking. And so we just have to keep that in mind um, uh, here on YouTube that uh, there's that aspect to it. So um, when you're watching people on YouTube. Um, you can tend to think that, oh, this, especially as a beginner, and this is, that's one reason why I wanted to make this video is to help beginners, um, both to, you know, to tamp, to want to tamp properly, to have a good smoke, um, but to realize that here on YouTube, it's, um, it's not the best example of how we, you know, normally pipe smoke because we're talking to a camera or what, you know, or whatever, and we're not, you know, properly tamping. So you have to think about um, the pipe, I think, as an upside-down campfire. I think that's the best way to describe it. Uh, perhaps there are other ways, I don't know. Um, but when you build a campfire um, and you get it going, if you just start throwing stuff on top, branches and you know leaves, and, and you just pile it on top, there's a chance that you're not going to be able to get that campfire going very well. Why? Because you're you're creating uh, kind of a shield over it that that keeps proper um, flows of oxygen to that fire. We all know that uh, when we're building a fire that you can't smother it. You have to you have to let the heat build up in in a certain way. Well, the pipe is the opposite. You know, it's the 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 fire is on top and the oxygen is uh, is being drawn back and forth through uh, the shank and the mouthpiece um, and we're drawing air in and out and pulling it down so it's a kind of an upside down fire in a way and so there's a certain way to care for that but uh, pipe tamping is is in a sense and um, in a very real way related to how you pack the pipe. Uh, nothing in pipe smoking is is um, you know like non-related. It's all related. It has to do with the pipe. It has to do with the tobacco. It has to do with the tamping. It has to do with the packing. They're all related. So tamping is related to how you pack the pipe and if you pack the pipe wrong it doesn't matter how you tamp it it's not going to work so but I don't want to talk about 
how to pack a pipe. Um, there are other people that have done uh, really good videos on how to properly pack your your pipe, and um, so you can look at those. But um, I just wanted to to, to uh, emphasize the the tamping portion um, of it. So um, tamping is I would call it the second stage of packing. Um, you know, because it's packing and tamping, they kind of go together because tamping is is the continual process of packing the pipe as you go along. And so there's a certain cadence to pipe smoking. Um, after you've packed your pipe, you do a charring light, and that um, burns the top the top layer of the tobacco. And then when tobacco burns, it expands. So the charring light allows for that certain expansion to happen at the beginning. And then uh, you wanna tamp that down. And uh, let me show you, um, I've seen uh, a lot of beginners, especially on YouTube and, and in person, when they're tamping, they, they whack at it like this and, and really quick. But that's not the proper way to do it. The proper way, and that's why you, you, it's good to have a nice edge on whatever you're tamping with. That's why a finger doesn't work as well sometimes, perhaps until you get really good at it. But you, you want to tamp all around the edges. And you want to do it in a uniform fashion so, it's, so the tobacco is, is going downward in, uh, in a horizontal Type fat. You don't want the tobacco to be crammed down hard on one side and, and loose on the other because you're going to get an uneven burn and you're going to be frustrated. So you want the tobacco to go down uh, flat and so you want to, um, around the bowl, you want to use the edge and flatten it uh, so it's flat all the way around. And so after you do the char light and then you push it down, then you would light it again. And that's the continual process of packing and tamping and lighting. That's the cadence that you go through um, to get a good, nice, even uh, burn and uh, a good smoke, and you get the fullest flavors, and uh, you don't you don't get a jam in your in your pipe, and you know, and then have to dig it out and start over or something. Um, so, and one of the keys, I think, and especially this goes back to, you know, making a video, is I don't think, um, especially beginners, um, I don't think people tamp their, their pipe enough. I think they allow uh, the burn to go on and they either, they're either talking or distracted in some way and they're allowing that a space to, to occur and then it is going to go out and then so they're going to be they're going to be tamping and lighting a lot more because they're allowing that space but if you press the the ember down and keep it down you know not crammed down but down against the new tobacco you'll get a nice even burn and you won't have to uh light as much this will be your light because you're pushing that heat down um, onto the new tobacco. It's like going back to the campfire. It's the same idea as when you have a uh, a campfire burning. You you don't just you don't just leave it there and let it burn. You you have to you know either take a poker stick or or however you do it and adjust the logs and place them closer together and keep the heat uh, all together and keep fuel into that. And our fuel is tobacco, you know, at a campfire it's logs, but you want to keep all that fuel together, allowing oxygen to get to it. Um, so it's, it's that same process of tending the, the fire. Tamping is t tending our fire, tending the, the burning tobacco so it burns properly and in an even uh, manner so that it's, you know, it's not constantly going out. Because a lot of people um, I hear ask, well, how do you you know, uh, smoke a pipe um, all the way down without relighting. I hear that a lot, especially from beginners. And 
Uh, well, it's important to know, I think, that that's not really the goal of pipe smoking. Um, first of all, uh, it's not really that important to not have to relight because um, there is, you know, a relaxing kind of cadence or a procedure to pipe smoking and that's lighting and tamping and, you know, puffing um, and those things. So, uh, so it's important to keep that in mind, especially as beginners, that the goal is not to um, never relight. But, uh, but if you do want to cut down on the amount of relights you have, then it's important to tamp properly and um, to do it in a right way. And then you'll find yourself um, having a, a, a better um, smoke without having to relight and fuss with your, your pipe a lot. Um, and you'll get a better uh, flavor um, out, of, out of your pipe. Um, and so like I said, um, the best way of course to smoke a pipe is to be able to sit down like this and do some work or read or uh, have a cup of coffee or whatever you like to drink with it um, to relax and to be able to take the time to to care for uh, proper tamping and uh, proper care for um, your pipe as you're smoking and to not uh, be distracted, you know, like talking on a video or or even walking though um, Often I'm walking with a pipe and that's okay. There's no really right or wrong uh, In where you smoke a pipe like that it's um, you know, some people do it as they're working outside or whatever, but the best way to smoke a pipe and the best way to get the best smoke is to be able to sit down and to tamp properly through your, because that's, that's the main, uh, the main way that a, that a pipe continues its proper burn is by proper tamping. And so, um, if you can do that, then, um, I think you'll see that you'll get the best, um, smoke out of your pipe that you can, if you're able to sit down and to practice good pipe tamping. So I think, um, I think that's, all for today. Uh, I didn't want to make this too long, um, but I think it's something that um, we all should think about, I think, more often. Um, I know I need to think about it more often when I'm smoking. Um, I can tend to get, you know, like everyone else, lazy about uh, certain things, about um, our craft, our art, our hobby, uh, whatever you want to call it. But I think for best results, I think um, keeping some of these things in mind um, is a good practice for us. And especially as people come into the to the hobby um, and they're not just seeing uh, bad habits, but they're also aware of, of the good habits and the right way to do things. Um, and so taking your time and doing it right, um, you know, like lots of things in life, always uh, help to make things come out better in the end. So, uh, to enjoy a good pipe, um, you need good tamping. So that's it guys. Uh, thank you guys so much, um, for watching, for, um, sticking through that. Sorry if it was too long and too laborious, but, uh, I wanted to get this done and get this out there. Um, perhaps it will help some of you guys, um, Think about it that have been pipe smoking for a long time and perhaps it will help some beginners as well so you guys have a good day uh, enjoy your pipes sit down relax and um, enjoy a good smoke um, hope you guys enjoy your day whatever you're doing uh, guys take care we'll see you again